many names. Gang stalking, mob stalking, community stalking. You're in the middle of this ridiculous, irrational impossibility that is real and is happening. First, The Guardian revealed the National Security Agency is collecting telephone records of millions of Verizon customers. You surveil someone through their phones, through their, uh, certainly through their television sets. The last year and a half, he's been systematically followed by a group of people. Does the FBI use drones for surveillance on U.S. soil? Yes. New Associated Press investigation shows that the Bureau has its own little air force with scores of planes flying over American cities, recording video and tracking cell phone conversations. He has a man outside of his house with, in a hood, like basically like a hood that looks and we can. Well, this almost sounds like gang stalking or something. Have you heard of that? Many of the things that victims of gang stalking describe are also symptoms of mental disorders. We're not having a group hallucination. This is actually something that's happening. grew up with my parents. My mother was a medical doctor. My father was a former rocket scientist uh, turned uh, teacher. I grew up with uh, a desire to be a graphic artist. And then I didn't like school very much, so I joined the Navy. And I did that for a couple of years. Didn't like that too much, so I came back to LA and basically lived in Los Angeles uh, as, a, uh, as a homeless man, just living on the street. I had my truck with a shell and I worked as a handyman or construction jobs that I would get. The gang stalking experience started for me when I noticed these black SUVs and other police vehicles driving slowly along the street, and but they never uh, came up to me or said anything, and then, I had seven or eight helicopters hovering directly over my apartment, and then it goes lie, and it keeps happening, keeps happening, and I, it begins to dawn on me that something is going on, and, and this continued on. Here comes the gang stalking helicopter. Here it comes. It's confusing to humans trying to understand gang stalking. Why would they do this to me? Why would they do these weird, petty little things that? you know, may even just irritate me at some moment. If you were to ask me what gang stalking is, it's a way to slowly kill people using their own decisions. See, we're getting one of our friends here. I get it, see, if, I don't know if you can hear that on the audio, but we're getting a buzz right now. And on, on certain topics that I'll bring up, I'll get buzzed. My understanding of gang stalking is that a number of people have found each other on the internet who believe that they are being targeted for harm. So this, there's this concept of hypervigilance, right? Which is that your threat assessment centers get locked into a position that is too high. They're warning you all the time about things not necessarily untrue, but that you would feel better not worrying about. Being of the opinion that you had to constantly look around and figure out what might be threatening to you or else your life would be at stake, would lead to you not just seeing connections that weren't there, but erring on the side of safety when you see a connection that might or might not be there. I'm a self-taught uh, makeup artist, and depending on the list that you look at, probably one of the top 10 makeup artists in the world. I, I think that just my life experience, me being around famous people all the time, what paparazzi photographers do to them, what normal people do to them if they go out in public, there'll be a gang-like reaction. This is essentially the same thing, except it's not, I didn't ask for it. In my experience, it started over a year ago. I had rented a space in Hawthorne, California, and people warned me that as a gay man, you know, it was maybe brave of me to rent this space. I never think about things like that. I didn't know what it was called. 
like I said, I just thought that it was bullying. I just thought that it was, you know, people that were just like, get the faggot out of the neighborhood or whatever. When 20 or 30 cars are hazing you on the freeway, behind you, in front of you, on both sides of you, completely controlling how fast you go, whether you exit, whatever you do, um, this is something bigger than that. I started spray painting their cars on the freeway. I pepper sprayed them. At this time, it was trying to get them to call the police. That's what I was trying to do. I had no other way I felt like other than to find out, are these people together? Are they working in this one collective group for the same reason? What they'll do to a particular person in order to stress them out is they'll hit them with the same thing over and over and over again. I would get Los Angeles Police Department vehicles lighting up their sirens and not pulling me over, but zooming around me, almost like a continual tactic. This happened so much that I was inspired to buy a dash camera. I believe it was the very next day, and it was the first time I experienced what I know now is called street theater. And I watch the parking lot literally fill up with cars. And, you know, heterosexual couples um, would hold hands and, like, stroll through the back of the parking lot like they were on some 1950s sitcom. People that are trying to look incredibly normal look incredibly abnormal because they're, they're acting. It's not authentic. That was when I first started thinking, it's all of them against me. This is clearly a collective, organized, whatever is happening. If a conspiracy is a bunch of people working together to do something that they don't want publicized, then it would be absolutely wrong to say that the world is not filled with conspiracies. The question is, what does it do for you to spend a lot of time thinking and feeling about the conspiracies that you believe exist? Government has to know about it. how can this, this can't be like some rogue group operating, you know, some shadow thing and, 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 and nobody knows about it. I go to the Van Nuys Police Department, I walk in, I say, this is my ID, this is my name. Are you following me or do you have any knowledge of me being followed? Is there a reason for you to be followed, sir? No, there's not. But people are, who's following you? Well, I don't know who it is. Well, what are they driving? They're driving cars with dealer tags that you can't trace. Well, sir, there are a lot of dealers here. There are a lot of dealer tags. How do you know that they're following you? Very quickly, you see how crazy you sound. I've never been arrested. <clears throat> I've never had a DUI. Anything whatsoever, whoever is in charge, which is so weird, is spinning this web about what a deviant, immoral, less than a human being you are. That's the only thing that I can think of that would get that many people in this collective effort to get rid of you. This happens to you enough, believe me, you will feel stress. You will get that feeling of helplessness. This is not just like a gang of random people just doing this for, you know, like randomly or without a plan. This is, this is procedural. The psychiatric definitions of delusion tend to focus on really two principles. Uh, one is that the ideas that you have are not very vulnerable to evidence. The other is that people in your culture don't share your beliefs. The question becomes, if you can find 10,000 people on the internet who believe the same thing as you, is it a delusion? Is it bizarre? Quite possibly not. If everybody believes this stuff, how is it in any way insane? People just would not believe the suffering 
that people in this, in this community endure every single day. Uh, I've lost just about all of my friends. They're afraid, of, afraid to talk to me. They just think, they think it's very effective. They think I'm crazy. My family doesn't know anything about it. I don't say a word to them. I don't know if my son knows, and I don't want anything to happen to him. It's really the most important thing that we can do for victims is to connect them with others who understand what they're experiencing, because no one else will. And isolation is really um, a key weapon that these perpetrators use to bring a person down to the ground, basically. If you go to see a psychiatrist, let's say it's the first time you're meeting a psychiatrist, and uh, you say, I'm under police surveillance, and the psychiatrist will write you off as suffering paranoid schizophrenia, and then he will give you medication. So we must assume that this is what American society believes, that all these government agencies, which normally watch over people, don't actually watch people at all. If anybody thinks that they are, they are being watched by this government agency, then they must be crazy. It cannot possibly be true. There really is no help at the moment, officially, to uh, assist target individuals. They can't go to the police, they can't go to, to the FBI, they can't go to Congress. There is nowhere that they can go. We are having to create the issue and also the solution. Why isn't our nation listening? This could be them. I wouldn't be surprised if most of the nation is under mass mind control. Given that the world is filled with groups of people operating in secret or trying to, to divorce us from our money or our power or whatever they want from us, one thing that might be helpful to ask from a psychiatric point of view is, what's wrong with the rest of us? So why am I so relaxed? What's wrong with me that I don't feel I'm being gang stalked? And is it that I'm living in the matrix where in order to feel more comfortable, I have decided to simply ignore a lot of the evils in the world and a lot of the potential threats to me. Okay, so what we're seeing here is this scene where the Keanu Reeves character climbs out of the battery vat chamber. You can't see, you know, precisely what it is because of that loss of focus but you can definitely see that something is abnormal. As, you, as you're looking into it, I drew a picture of what the shapes of those claws are. It looks like a bird talon or a reptile talon. I started searching on conspiracy type movies, UFO movies, weird movies on YouTube. I came across the reptilian shapeshifter subject. What I can confirm is that there are apparently non-humans, apparently some of them are extraterrestrial, and apparently they have some kind of evil grip on our world. Richard Bruce here, and if you haven't seen my channel before, this is gang stalking for reptilian shapeshifter movie uploads to YouTube. When I uploaded my study, within 15 minutes, helicopters kept zooming over my apartment like there was a drug bust in my building. And then it, it didn't take me long. I think it popped into my mind pretty quick. Oh my God, is this from what I uploaded to, to YouTube? Because the whole thing was so freaky at first. Like when you're seeing these, these non-human features, you're like, oh my God, what is this? What could possibly be going on? They're carnivorous. They are not friendly to mankind. Um, at least the ones that are here. Are you saying carnivorous, they eat humans? Yes. When I told my family about this, it's almost like, I get like a, a non sequitur reply from a computer. It's like, it, it just, they, they just kind of look at me like, I'm not, even, I'm not even hearing this, and I'm really not interested in that. My father, the, the, uh, the rocket scientist, the doctorates in mathematics, when I tell him anything about this, one of the main points of discrediting me is saying that it's like, it's just you, just, you just have to be negative and dark about everything. You have to, because of your own dissatisfaction at being unemployed. I mean, that's a highly, you know, it's, under, it's an understandable point of view. It's like somebody who's disgruntled with life in general might flock to an idea. Like, yeah, there's evil reptilians doing it all to us and that's why I'm so miserable or whatever, you know.
Nobody wants to be called crazy. It's one of the worst things you can imagine. I don't think I or any psychiatrist would recommend that people are convinced that what they believe is not true. The more useful target would be what pain are they feeling in their life. At least if, if I can do anything, if I can achieve anything by exposing this issue to the general public, it could be that it takes away these criminals' right to destroy people's lives with this because it's terrible what's happening to people. I mean, what kind of a country do we live in where you can't say certain things or do certain things without our own government using these subversive, underhanded tactics to drive you crazy? You're in the middle of this ridiculous, irrational impossibility that is real and is happening and is stranger than fiction or anything that you can imagine. And it's... <sighs> this is terrifying. Fuck. I don't want to start crying. It... It pisses you off. It frustrates you beyond anything that you can imagine. And it, um... It changes you. We could see it from everything. The fluoride in the water, the chemtrails, the fake education system, the fake medical system. I mean, when are we gonna wake up and stand up and fight? As the scripture says, how good is it for brethren to be together? Meaning, how good is it for people who truly trust each other and are friends to be together?